So I was watching the Speed Cubers documentary on Netflix the other day, and it got me thinking. Max Park and Felix Zemdegs were the two favorites to win the world championship. Slight spoilers for the documentary, not really that important to the story anyway, but they both ended up underperforming. Then I was talking in my Patreon Discord, and Elliot brought up something I thought was unrelated at first, but turns out might explain what happened during that world championship. This is an advanced cubing technique that nobody ever talks about. Many top cubers don't even know they're taking advantage of it. Or in the case of Max and Felix at the World Championships, they didn't realize that they forgot to use it. If we think about what exactly speed cubing is, the goal is to solve the cube with the smallest possible number on the timer, and almost all the optimizations come from what we do on the cube. But we never talk about the other part of it. How can we just make the timer show a lower number? And I don't mean having a faulty timer that's going at the wrong speed. No, we're talking about having a normal functioning timer display a lower time at the end because time itself is passing slower. Is that even possible? Yes, and I'm not even joking, it is physically possible for time to run slower. Let me explain. We feel like time is constant, it's the same for everyone all the time, but it is actually not. And that was discovered by Albert Einstein, who showed that it's actually the speed of light, which is always the same, and the speed of time can actually change. I won't go too in-depth because this is not a science channel, but I'll give you a quick example. Say you're in a rocket ship going near the speed of light. If I see a light beam right next to you, then it should be going at about the same speed, just slightly faster. But that's just what I see from Earth. For you, light has to move away from you at the speed of light. It's literally the law of physics. So it seems like the light is a different distance from the rocket depending on where you're looking from. But we can actually resolve this by saying that in the rocket ship, less time has passed. That's why the light beam has not moved that far yet and now everything works just fine. The speed of light stays the same for both people, but inside the fast rocket ship, time is going slower than for someone who's not moving. Time dilation doesn't only occur from fast speeds, but also from having stronger gravity. I don't want to be explaining science this whole video, so if you want to learn why, you can go read some actual science on this. So you might be wondering, can you just go into a rocket ship and get faster times? Well, no. Since your cube and timer are both moving fast, you'll actually just get normal times. Ideally, you want the timer in the rocket ship and you outside the rocket ship, but obviously that's not going to work because you can't start and stop the timer. So there's the idea. You want the timer to slow down, which means having it go faster or be under stronger gravity, but you want to keep the cube under normal time. That way the timer gives you a lower number when you're done solving. Now that we know how time dilation works, let's see a few examples of how to improve your solves. Patrick Ponce recently destroyed the world record one-handed average, and if you know what to look for, you can really tell he's been practicing his time dilation skills. First of all, he's not using the table and just holding the cube in the air. If you watch Max Park solve one-handed, he uses the table a lot, which is actually not the right choice. Max has to move the cube up and down between the table a lot. Moving the cube less keeps it at a lower speed and therefore lower time dilation, which is what you want for the cube. Another thing Patrick does right is keep Keeping his other hand on the timer. Keeping it on the timer allows your slight body movements to transfer it into the timer, and when the timer moves more, it counts as being at a higher speed and therefore your timer slows down. Now let's see how time dilation through gravity can help us. And how the time dilation works here is the closer you are to a massive object such as the Earth, then the stronger the gravity becomes and the more time dilation you experience. This means you want to hold the cube as high as possible to avoid time dilation. And you want the timer to be as low as possible. If you get a low table, that's better, but if you can just throw it on the ground, then that could be even better. Feet solving almost got this right, but we also had the cube on the ground, which was a big mistake. But you'll actually notice, and I've made fun of this before, Max Park holds the cube very low when he does his big cube solves. But if you take a look, in recent years he's actually started holding it higher. This allows his timer to experience more gravity and therefore have time pass slower for it, while his cube has less of a slowdown effect, allowing him to turn faster. And that has given him better records. And in the next few years, I hope to see Max Park standing up with the cube over his head. The effect of time dilation on cubing is not super well known, so I may be missing tips here. If you can think of any other ways time dilation can help in your solves, then let me know in the comments.
But now we have to talk about something a bit more serious, and that is the inherent unfairness of time dilation. Here is a heat map of where all the best cubers in the United States live. Now you may notice some similarities with the elevation heat map of the United States. Wherever the elevation is lower, there seems to be more top cubers. Why is this? Well, you can explain it with time dilation. Now, if you're just doing one solve with stronger gravity, well, your cube and timer are both under stronger gravity, so they both have the same amount of time dilation and it doesn't even matter. So this isn't about individual solves, this is about the people that live there. If you live in a place with stronger gravity, then time goes slower for you, which means you age slower. And as you probably all know, when you are younger, it is easier to acquire new skills, such as cubing. So all the people that can stay younger longer can spend more of their days practicing at a younger age, and therefore just end up being better cubers in the end. Of course, there are outliers, such as Maddie Hiroto Anaba, who lives in Hawaii. Hawaii has a high average elevation, but Maddie travels to competitions a lot. Look at where all his last few competitions were. And you might be wondering, why is traveling important? Well, if you travel from Hawaii to anywhere else, you have to fly, and flying makes you faster. Being faster gives you more time dilation, so it doesn't feel like as much time has passed, so you're less rusty by the time you get there, not to mention the fact that you're aging less on the plane, so Maddie gets to stay young. And that's not to mention, if you stay young longer, you stay short longer, which means you're closer to the earth and therefore age even slower. Do you see the problem? And let's not forget top cuber privilege. Have you ever been to a competition and been the judge for a very good cuber and gotten nervous? When you're nervous, your hands shake. When your hands shake, so does the stopwatch that measures the competitor's inspection time, time dilating it more, allowing the top cuber to get away with more inspection time than other people. So let's bring it back to the start. Why did Max Park and Felix Zemdegs underperform at the World Championships? Well, you can actually see it in the documentary if you look very closely. You see this right here? Max and Felix are both sitting still. Yep, they are not moving, they are just getting older than everybody else who is moving, and they are also getting rustier because time is passing faster for them. And would you look at who's there with them? Bill Wang, Mats Volk, underperformed. I want to bring time dilation to everyone's attention because not only can you use these tips to make you a faster cuber, I also want to see regulations put in place to make it more fair for everyone. Just like how there's a regulation that says a record didn't happen if a better record happened later that day and that keeps everything fair for everyone.